Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by. So, a couple months ago, we picked up two dividing heads from a machine shop sale. Both of them were pretty dirty, and finally get ar getting around to cleaning up the first one and evaluating it. Um, did find a couple issues, had to make one repair. Um, so, follow along and uh, have a look at it. Uh, this might end up being a two-part, depending on how the editing process goes. So, anyways, um, thanks again for stopping by. Um, we do have the other dividing head to, uh, to work on. It might be a little while before we get to that one. And then I've got one other uh, existing one that I had that needs a little cleanup as well. So, probably have a, a follow-up to, to this series. Okay, guys. Thanks a lot for stopping by. Good morning everyone. So we've got our dividing head, the small dividing head, all torn down including the, uh, the small three jaw chuck. So we're going to put everything in the crock pot except for the main head here. Um, the, uh, the work involved in getting the spindle out just isn't worth it for the risk of possibly damaging it. So I've already cleaned this by hand um, with solvent and uh, scotch bright, a little sandpaper and so forth. So we have got to repaint that today. But everything else you see here is going in the crock pot. I'm gonna have to figure out something for these little parts so they don't get lost in the bottom. <laughs> okay, so I didn't film disassembling this thing, but uh, I'll try to get some video going back together. Okay, we're getting our money's worth. We got this baby full. We already got our purple power in there. Just gotta add a little water and let it cook. Just opened the lid to see how we're doing. We've been cooking about four hours. So look at that. That looks like, uh, like a leaf or something floating. That's actually paint. The, uh, the paint's already peeling off. There's a couple of those um, paint membranes floating around in there, but uh, yeah, she's getting her done. Here's a quick look at how the parts look after they come out of the uh, hot tank uh, crock pot. And you have to brush them. I, I just scrubbed them a little bit with the scrub brush and uh, some soap hot water because there's always a you know like a layer of film but uh, I mean look at this casting <laughs> took all the paint off there's I mean there's a little bit of residue spots but uh, there's there's the cover there's the um, back of the rotary mechanism yeah I mean, I've been using this method for a while now, and uh, it's always worked out really good. So it was six hours cooking in the crock pot with the um, uh, about one third purple power. And I think it would have been fine with just four hours, but uh, I had to run over and watch my grandson play hockey. So just let it cook a little bit longer. And you don't have to worry about rust because when the water's that hot, I mean, it's right at boiling, essentially. When the water's that hot, there's no oxygen in the water. So um, you don't have to worry about them rusting as long as they're completely submerged.
I had to make a new paint curing box. So in the winter time, if you guys haven't tried this, this is the way to go. Just uh, an old cardboard box, line it with some foil, and then uh, depending on, well, right, today's pretty nice. We got about 65 degree day today, but uh, on the colder days, I'll put some of that clear cellophane like uh, I can use for wrapping food over it, and it works great. And best of all, free! We're ready to start assembly. Here's all our parts cleaned, polished, ready to go, painted. We did our bluing. <laughs> hey, there's my candy bar. I wonder where that went. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, we did our bluing on a few of the parts. And we also cleaned up the index plates. So, let's start putting it together. Alright, we're here at the bench trying out a different camera angle for you guys. So we're going to get our uh, dividing head put back together here. First thing I want to do is put these two pieces together and work on this repair. So it'll be easier to handle this with these guys assembled. So let's put a little oil on here. I was going to use whey oil on this part, but it's a, it is a really close fit and whey oil gets sticky after a while. So I was a little worried about the oil getting gummy and then this thing getting stuck and not be able to move it. So we're just using some spindle oil here. This is really a precise fit, so we gotta get it just right. See if I can bring this part down. Make sure I didn't mess up and okay it's got just enough clearance to make it around okay. let me get a close-up of these bolt holes so anyways what happened is um, the last guy to use this dividing head I'm pretty sure his name was Bubba and they may have had too short of bolts in here or probably just wrenched on it too hard. And as you can see, they broke out the, uh, uh, the bolt holes. So um, before I cleaned everything up, I looked at this and there was the, the, these uh, threaded holes. They were, they were drilled pretty deep, but they weren't threaded all the way. So I, I came in with uh, with first a regular plug tap, tapped all the way to the bottom. Then I came in with a bottoming tap and cleaned them up. So I'll get a close up, but we've got about at least two, maybe two and a half diameters of good thread still down in there. So the way we're gonna fix this is we're gonna put studs in and we're gonna Loctite them in. Uh, I thought about trying to fill in <laughs> this damaged area, but it's, it would only be for cosmetic and 
I just as soon leave it like this so someone knows that that it's been repaired and they can see what the extent of the damage was rather than trying to hide something. So that's what we're going to do. Let me uh, change the camera angle here and uh, we'll get these put in. Okay, well, I decided to leave the camera angle the same. So we're just going to put, <laughs> got the Harbor Freight uh, blue Loctite or thread locker, I guess. So we're just going to load these up with some thread locker and run them in. Try to keep my hand out of the way. The air pressure <laughs> down in the, uh, the hole there is actually pushing the thread locker out. I'm going to put a drop inside. More on here. And here's our cover. Let's just put a, just a little bit of oil on that. Here's our washers that we blackened. These are these are hardened uh, SAE washers. All right, I'm going to set this aside for a few minutes. We're going to work on the chuck, getting it back together. So, um, Mr. Bubba, he got a hold of this chuck also. And this is a, this is a uh, buck adjust to true. So let's see if this will show up. So this uh, backing piece is cracked right through here. Um, and it's it's only on the back side, probably from over tightening the uh, the adjusting set screw. Luckily, it, there is a, a little bit of a crack up here, but the, this web here is fine. Um, Obviously, you wouldn't want this if you're using it on a, on a lathe, but for the dividing head, I think it'll it'll be okay. All right, so next I want to put the backing plate on before we do the jaws. And we should have, we've got several witness marks on here.
This is what happens when you wait too long. It's been, geez, over a week. <laughs> Before you put something back together, you forgot how you took it apart. But anyways, this protruded um, inner section here, that's what the, uh, the adjusting set screws push against to allow you to center up the back plate to, to get rid of your run out. Okay. And let's line this up. Find our punch mark up here. This chuck key is really bad. <laughs> I can't wait to make a new one. It's driving me nuts. Okay, looks good. They're all meeting at the same time, so we got them in the right positions. Okay, we got our cover for the uh, the worm gear or pinion gear and we've got to put our little gits oilers back in here so we got our uh, detent plunger needs to go back in there I think that's it. Yeah, we did get a little mark on there. I'll come back with some 600 grit. Polish that little burr off. Okay, I like that. We got a plug goes in here and our uh, stop bolt or lock bolt goes in this one. I'm going to put a drop of oil in there. Now that was more than a drop. Okay, so this is the, that that is the original screw. I checked and looked at some others online just to make sure that that's what actually went in there. And all it does is plug this hole off. So I, I guess it gives you the option, you could put the lock on this side, but you'd have to pull the spindle to do that. And this is just a cover, so it doesn't need to be that tight. Here's our, I guess it would be the thrust nut or retaining nut. Make sure I got the right wrench here. Okay.
And I'm just going to try to feel the end play here. We've got a tiny bit. I can barely feel it, but I can hear the oil <laughs> squishing in and out. Still have a tiny bit of end play. Okay. And we'll tighten that up later once we're happy with the end play. Okay, so we're ready to put our pinion gear in or worm, I guess would be the right terminology. This will show up. There's a uh, an oil groove in here. You guys can see that. I can't feel any end play, and there's no drag. So we're going to go with that. Okay, let me put a little grease on that. So we got this pin that actually holds The worm assembly in, and they've uh, they've staked one end, so that end will be the back end. Let's just check the fit. Okay, we're good. And we've got a couple wipers. We've got a, or a wiper. We've got to put in here. I think I'll put some grease on this to kind of hold it. And then, <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see this spring or not, <laughs> that is a tiny little spring that pushes on this wiper. It's more of a dust shield than anything else, I would say. But, uh, let's see if I can show you guys. So we got a little tiny counter bore in here. The spring fits. Okay, and then the wiper goes on top of it. Like that. Except I got it upside down. Let's flip it over. I don't think it makes any difference. Just, I noticed it had the little mark from the spring. So the this worm assembly can pivot so that you can um, release it and, and go freewheel and also adjust the backlash. So this little guy here, he keeps the, uh, the bottom closed off so chips and dirt and such don't get in there. So now, <laughs> to get that in there and not have that pop out, let's see, uh, <laughs> see how lucky we get here. I think we got it, guys. Now, get our pin started. Right there. Nice. All right. 
Let me get a punch. Okay, so I don't know if you guys can see how this works. So right now we're engaged with the worm, but you can tip this back and now the worm or the, uh, the spindle is free. Okay, now we're engaged again. Okay, I like it. All right, let's put the uh, cover on. <laughs> Keep you guys in frame here. So we've got another one of these seals. And let me grab it. So we had to make a new one. We had the spring, luckily. Bubba had just stuck a piece of shim stock in there. Didn't really fit. So we made one that actually fits. And just like the other one, we're gonna put a little grease on it. Try to get all <laughs> everything engaged and not lose that little seal. Looks like it's working. Okay. Get our screws. got some play so I'm pushing it all the way toward the front it's, it's a machine service in the front so it kind of makes sense that that would keep it in alignment Okay. okay, we're engaged. All right, I'm gonna just do a preliminary setting on these guys. Just snug. <laughs> 